Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to our online service, December 20th, 2020. I'm Pastor Caesar David, Minister of Union Park United Methodist Church in Des Moines, Iowa. We're so glad that you've taken this time to be with us, uh, uh, to worship the Lord together with us. Uh, today we have a very special service. It is called a Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols. And we have the special selected readings from the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. And we have specially selected hymns and carols for us. And all of these together tell the story of Jesus, tell the story of the birth of the Christ child, and brings out the significance and tells us what Christmas is all about. So I'm sure that it's going to be a beautiful time for us, not only a treat to our ears, but to understand the message of Christmas directly from the pages of the Bible and from these precious hymns and carols that we'll be listening to. I'm grateful to all the people who have put this service together and have participated in this service, reading and singing and arranging for the music. Thank you so much, and um, let's worship the Lord together. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Fourth Sunday of Advent, waiting on the threshold. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine. Too often, we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity, God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, the Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas season, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go to, into heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger Therefore, let us hear again from the Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. <clears throat> but first, because this of, if, of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth, he came to save. For love and unity with the one church, he did build. For goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. 
These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Jesus Christ himself has taught us. Please join me in the, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you haven't been by the church recently, take a drive by in the early evening. Churchmen have collaborated to get the nativity scene lit and on display in our front yard. A warming sight for Christmas. We'll, uh, Bill will be on a short vacation December 24th and 22nd. The church office will be closed on the 25th in observance of Christmas. We want to thank all the December liturgists and Advent readers. Myself and my wife Karen, Kathy Hillman, Chris and Brad Barkley, Janet Short, Nita and Rob Brower, myself and Reverend Caesar and Sumi David, Sandy Cook and Lisa Dennis. The end of the year is fast approaching. If any committee chair or group leader would like to submit something for the January 2021, uh, boy, it feels good to say that. A newsletter, please have it in the church office by Monday, December 28th. Thank you. Oh, Christmas Eve service will be available on Facebook and YouTube after 6 p.m. on December 24th, Christmas Eve. The Almighty God bless us with divine grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And under the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. First letter. Lesson. God announced in the Garden of Eden Adam and Evan's punishment for the rebellion and that the seed of women shall bruise the serpent's head. Genesis 3, 8 through 15, 17 through 19. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man. He said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree in which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you have gave to me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. I will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the woman he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, you have eaten of the tree, about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed to the ground because of you, you toil, you shall eat of it all of the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plant of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it, out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The word of the God, thanks to be God.
second lesson. God promises to Abraham that by his descendants all the nation of the earth shall obtain blessing. Genesis twenty two fifteen to eighteen. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gates of their enemies. And by their offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed the voice. The world of the Lord thanks to be God.
lesson. The prophet announces the birth of a king to a people in darkness. Isaiah 9, 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fourth lesson. The King is coming and will usher in the reign of justice for the poor and peace for all of God's creation. Micah 5 verses 2 to 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Apertha, who are one of the, li who are one of the little cl clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lesson, Luke 1, 26 to 35 and 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your room and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, 
since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The, then the angel departed from her. The words of the Lord, thanks be the God. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save us sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, Sixth lesson, against the backdrop of emperors and taxes, Jesus is born. Luke 2, 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from town of Nazareth, from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to, deliver, to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
um, seventh lesson, the shepherds go to see the savior of the world lying in a manger, Luke 2, 8 to 16. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. lesson. The wise men follow a star to find the child Jesus, the King of the Jews. Matthew 2 verses 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe the star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring, him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay his, him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went to the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. 
Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. John 1, 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All of the things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came to, into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was, all, was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as he witnessed to testify to the light, so that all might believe him through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being him, being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own did, people did not accept him. But to all, the, all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become of children of God, who were born, not of blood, or the will of the, of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the world became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special time of Christmas. We're not able to do everything we look forward to doing this Christmas, but thank you for your love. Thank you for becoming flesh and dwelling in our midst. Thank you for the embodiment of your love. Today we thank you for Rick Williams, David Wright III, John Purdy, and Judith Hammer as I celebrate their birthdays. Please continue to bless them and watch over them, supplying their needs and keeping them well, that they may continue to praise you, serve you, and testify to your goodness in their lives. We also thank you for the wedding anniversary of Tom and Ella Williams. Thank you for their ministry and their commitment. Please keep them both in good health, singing your praises and telling of your love. Please continue to use them as a blessing to their family, friends, and the church. We pray for those of us who aren't well, Lynn Ball, Bob Irvin, Cindy Brown, Reverend Bob and Linda Kelly, Linda Shriver, Jan Birkenbein, Elaine Burke, Don Burke, Jaylene Barton, David Binner, Robert Zust, Gladys Kohler, Trevor Negret, Birch Michael, Baby Trejo, and Will Cook. Bless them with strength, healing, forbearance, and hope. Keep them from discouragement and anxious thoughts. Bless them with the assurance of your presence and your love. We ask, Lord, that you fill their hearts with your peace and joy. We also pray for the bereaved family and friends of Connie, Laurie Robinson's mother. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring your peace and comfort in the hearts of this family and that you would bless them to cling to the assurance of eternal life. Thank you for letting us worship you at this time. Please accept our praises and our petitions. Touch us and speak to us as we open our minds and hearts to understanding what you would have us do. Amen. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I think it was a beautiful service with all these special scripture lessons that were read for us and the wonderful hymns and carols that were sung that were not only a treat to our ears, but uh, that told the significance of Christmas, that told the story of Christmas. I'm very grateful to everybody who has participated in this service, making it so special. One of the things that we note from this is that God has a plan, and the birth of Jesus Christ is in keeping with that plan of salvation and the promise of a Messiah. And Mary was a chosen one to bear Jesus Christ in her womb for the word to become flesh. Now Mary, a young girl of 14 or 15, could hardly be, be expected to understand the theology and the spirituality of it all. When you look at Mary, who was pledged to be married to Joseph, and she's waiting for her marriage and looking forward to all the joys of marriage and the joys of um, a, a home, when suddenly the angel makes this announcement that she's going to be with child, this child is going to be from God, and this child is special. And we can imagine that this was a major interruption in Mary's life. Now we look to the Christmas season to be a time of perfect joy and love and harmony and that and that warm fuzzy feeling that we expect at Christmas, except that this year for many reasons, we may not be feeling that way. Our Christmas joy has been interrupted by various things. Um, we know about the interruptions. 2020 has been a year of interruptions. We couldn't meet together as a church for most of the year. We couldn't have a lot of the programs that we plan to have, and even in your lives, you may have had a lot of plans, but uh, those plans were interrupted because, uh, because of COVID or other reasons. Um, and although this is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, for many of us it is very difficult because something has, has interrupted the joy. It could be sickness, 
It could be the death of a loved one. It could be financial setbacks. It could be divorce. It could be loneliness. What was Mary's response to the interruptions in her life when the angel announced to her that she is the chosen one and that she will bear a child who is the Messiah? She was perplexed. That's what the Bible says. But when the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God, the angel also explains to Mary that no word from God will ever fall. It is then that Mary is able to accept this as a holy interruption and then say, I am the Lord's servant. And Mary answered to the angel, may your word to me be fulfilled. And so here we look at Mary to understand how she is making a holy response to what she now understands as a holy interruption. So Mary's response is like this. She's probably thinking, I'm scared, I'm confused, I don't know what will happen, I don't know how it will happen, but it's from God. God's will be done, I will submit, and I will obey. And Mary submitted herself to be used to accomplish God's purpose. And we have Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. She accepted that holy interruption. And she had a holy response to it. The theologian Bonhoeffer writes in Life Together that we must be ready to allow to be interrupted by God. And God may interrupt us. God may disrupt our life our plans, to use those moments to fulfill his plan. We may not be able to understand at that time what those plans could be, but it could be that God may interrupt us to bless other people or to put us on the path of more blessing or to teach us something special or to give us rest, to strengthen our faith, to help us to see the beauty of his creation, to help us to understand how his grace works, or simply to show me what's around other people and their needs, to humble me, to break me, to shape me, to mold me, to use me, and any of these reasons. And so we must be ready for holy interruptions. Sometimes it is in those moments of interruptions in those special instances that we may perhaps not understand completely just then, that God reveals himself to us in ways we can never experience otherwise. Let's pray for wisdom to see how God interrupts our life. Let's seek his strength and his grace so that we can submit to his plan more eagerly, more readily. Let's thank God for holy interruptions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to understand when you interrupt our lives and our plans. Help us to make a response of submission to your will to accomplish your purpose. Bless us to see these holy interruptions in our lives as a blessing. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
let us receive the benediction. May the Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace and joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.